everyone, welcome to another video by Joe and I. Today we're going to talk you through the Oscar model of coaching. Now there are two of them and as you'll see from the title of this one we're talking to you today about Oscar with a C. And this is a model that stands for outcome, situation, choices and consequence, action and review. So we're going to share with you some different coaching questions that you can use at each phase of this model to help somebody work through a particular challenge or goal that is important to them. So good for line managers, people in HR, and well, all of us really that work in the field of coaching as a nice framework and a simple way to have conversations. So Joe, do you wanna kick us off with the first one? Yeah, so um, the questions in this model are about helping the other person to increase their self-awareness and also to start taking more responsibility for the, the situation that they're in and, and what they want to do about it. Um, so before you even get into Oscar, you need to really clarify what is it the person wants to talk about? Um, what is it that they want to cover? What is it that they want to focus on? Um, and also check in, how do they want you to be as their manager, as their coach in that conversation? So once you've aligned on that, um, we then move into the first step, which is outcome. And you might want to confirm here, what would you like to walk away from at the end of today's session? Or another way to ask that is, what does success look like at the end of today? Or what would make this a really useful conversation um, today? Then, um, so that's the short term in terms of the 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute conversation you're going to have. When you then look at the outcome in the long term, you're going to ask questions like, what's your lo long term outcome or your long term goal around this issue? What will success look like for you over that period? How will you know that you have achieved that? So what is it that would be happening for you to know that you've achieved this long term outcome? Or another way to ask that is, what does 10 out of 10 look like? And you would explore what impact this would have, um, what it would cost them if they didn't achieve it. So that's your outcome, really understanding what do you want at the end of our conversation today? And in relation to the topic we're gonna to talk about, what are your longer term objectives? Yeah, great. And that will give you really good clarity on what it is you're working with and also help the person you're coaching to connect in between today and actually you know the whole reason for having this um, this conversation and the motivation for the future so when you've got that clarity you can move into situation this is really finding out about what's going on for them right now um so you might ask so what you know what's the current situation and what are this what are the things that led up to you um being aware that this is a need or a problem or or the situation that you're in so you can kind of get some of the context you might also want to explore impact. So what impact is this having on you? What impact is this having on others? You know, so you're really starting there to get into the sense of why this is a problem for that person. And as the coach, what you're doing is really trying to step into their world and really understand and see it from their perspective. So that's where you'd explore around impact. Um, then you might start to ask, so, you know, what is it that you're doing that might be contributing to this being a problem for you? This is about getting the coach E, sorry, the coach E to be in a place of um, control. So a lot, of, a lot of the times we're working with problems, they feel out of our control and that things are happening to them. So with this question, what you're doing is, well, how might you be contributing to or creating parts of these problems or situations? Um, what made you aware that this was a problem in the first place? What are the things that led up to you becoming aware of the need for change? Um, and, you know, what, what else is happening that feels relevant to this exploration that we're having? So it's really good place um, in a situation just to get your client or your coachee kind of grounded and having a good kind of 360 degree review, I guess, of the situation that they're in. Yeah. And then we move into choices and consequences. So a, a good starting question here is just what could you do to start to resolve the situation? So, you know, right now, today, what could you start to do? And what choices do you have? So just starting to even asking what choices 
you're giving them a suggestion that there is more than one thing that they could do. And in terms of us wanting to feel in control as human beings, um, if we start to realize, well, we always have at least two choices, which is do what we're doing now or do something different. It begins to give us a sense of control. Mm. Um, lots and lots of other questions here. So um, how far towards your outcome would each of these options take you? Um, so, you know, you could even get them to draw visual around that if you're working with somebody that, that is quite visual. You might think about um, what advice would you give to somebody else in that situation? Sometimes um, we find it hard to think about our own situation, but if we almost give that to somebody else and think, what would we advise them to do? All of a sudden we can think of lots of different ideas. We might also think about... Um, what would what would other people in your life important people in your life what would their perspective be on this what advice might they give you what would you do if you knew what to do is a great question it plays with your mind you think what what is that question um things like um um uh, you know what are the the uh positive outcomes likely to be what might the downsides the cost benefit analysis of each of these I think you need to be careful with that as an option because um, if you've got somebody that is more cynical generally you might not want to invest more attention for them around that so you need to think carefully about that um, but also just asking them what would you like to do differently mm. or what would you do if you had a magic wand so you get the idea this is all about really stretching out into the different choices that they've got and thinking about that from different perspectives and then examining each of the consequences that are likely to follow with each of those choices. Yeah, and the art in that section is about creation. You know, it's not about narrowing down and choosing. It's really about opening up and considering all of the possibilities. And if you're working with people who are kind of high achievers and very able they will quickly try to think of an action and then they're, they're off they're moving on this is really just about pausing that need for moving forward and just a chance to go hey look you know let's just be creative and look at all the options because they might surprise themselves with coming up with something else so when you've got this whole big list of things that they could do you'll then move into action and that's where you'll start to pin down with simple questions so so what will you do next what's your first next step which of those options seem like the, the best or the most sensible or the most realistic for you to take forward? Um, and as you've got those actions, you'll then take that exploration out further of like, well, what support might you need? And what resources do you have that will make these actions easy to take? Um, who might you need support from? How might you hold yourself to account? Um, how will you stay motivated to achieve these goals? How committed are you to achieving these actions? You know, so, you're, so it's not just about what will you do, but how will you do it? When will you do it? Who do you need support from to be able to do it? Because often we don't think about that part. We just think, right, what am I going to do? Off I go. Um, so it's useful to expand that thinking. And then you move into the last phase. Yeah, so the, the final phase is called review, and I think this is often skipped over. Um, so it's important just to spend time here because it's about accountability. So thinking about, okay, that's great. So we've thought through um, what it is that you'd like to achieve, how important it is to you. We've thought through about what is the situation that you're in at the moment? How does that relate to where you want to be? We've spent some time exploring the choices that you've got and the options. And we've thought through the consequences of each of those. You've now, you've gone from that broad, lots of options, narrowing it down into an action. Now think about how will we review your progress towards this? How will you review your, your progress towards it? Um, what, how are you going to check that your actions are moving you towards your outcome? Because they might not. So as we know, the world can be quite unpredictable. Um, so it, it's the how. How are you going to measure your success? When and how shall we get together or review your progress towards it, whether you're in the role of coach or you're in the role of manager? Um, what would you like to be able to tell me when you next see me? So this is really getting them to think about, you know, put themselves into that future self, imagining having achieved it, which is really great in terms of motivation. 
Um, and how will you celebrate success? I love this question. I think it's so important. I think it's really underrated. Um, but also learning about how the person that you're supporting celebrates and rewards themselves is really important information about what motivates them, um, their beliefs about themselves. Um, and then how will you maintain the momentum? Because some people have loads of energy to get going, but and that's not the problem. They have lots of those things that they've started, but they may not have completed. So how will you maintain your momentum? And that might be when the person goes, mm, that might be the bit where I have a problem. Mm. Great. Um, you know, that's information that you can then work with. And then just rounding off and almost coming back into the actions and checking off again, is there any other interim support that you will need as we've been talking about how you will view your progress? So it's a really complete kind of process. It's got a good flow to the conversation. We've suggested some questions you could use at each of the stages. It's really important that you ask questions that fit who you are and the language that you would use. But this model is just a guide um, it's not a robotic um, process that you need to go through. So, you know, pick and mix the questions um, that fit for you. Or if you think of any other questions that you think fit the objectives for each of that part of the process, then go for it. Yeah. Um, it's most important you have rapport with the other person. Yeah, and uh, and play with it as well. It doesn't have to be a rigid model. You can maybe move around the, the different phases. Well, rarely do you go from the start to the end in one smooth process. So if you mm -hmm. find yourself needing to go back up because you realise, actually, I don't think we were clear on what it was we were talking about, welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's part of it. And actually, that's great work. That's great noticing as a manager or as a coach. Yeah. And you've still got time to be able to go through. Yeah. So thanks for joining us um, within Good Company. If you'd like to have access to other videos on tools and techniques, you can either come and join us in the coaching crowd or you'll find other videos on YouTube or you can come and uh, visit us on our website, www.igcompany.co.uk. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye.